<sighs> so I lost 20 terabytes of footage about a few months ago, four months ago maybe. So if you guys know me, and this isn't the first video you're watching of me, I moved into this apartment, and as I moved in, I lost 20 terabytes of footage like that. Yeah, it was a big shock. I don't want that to ever happen to you. I got super lucky that I only had one paid project on there that I had to reshoot half of it. So that's good, but all that other footage is gone. You know, the footage of me and my dad and just really good memories with friends and family and all of that is gone and all I have left are my Rambling Road series and other YouTube videos on the channel, which I actually need to back up because that's all I have. The company that uh, I dealt with that gave me the worst customer service of all time, all I got back were my hard drives. They came in these little plastic shielding bags. That's it. I have four of them and all of these files are corrupted. There's a chance that I can get these back. If you know anybody that can do this job, the reason why I didn't was because it was gonna cost me $6,000, they told me. $6,000, if you wanna hear the entire story, click the link in the upper right hand corner, I think, and I'll give you the the entire story from my bathroom exploding on, on uh, like, literally exploding everywhere to my hard drive, all my hard drives corrupting, and yeah, having it be a big pile of shit. But um, enough of that, let's actually get into the stuff that you're here for, and that is how to store your data properly. I'm gonna give you guys uh, different options for your price range or kind of like the level of where you're at whether you're just getting started and you need something basic or you're kind of in the thick of it and you need to really up level your game and get some massage massage massive storage setup number one this is for you're just starting out and actually like working and, and getting some paid projects and you're starting to get a lot of footage or you're a vlogger or you're a photographer um this is a great setup for the photographer this is a a g drive by g technology this is a g drive this is the thunderbolt version of that so you have three types of connectivity to connect these into your computer and they affect the speeds too you have usb 3 which is the slowest right now you have thunderbolt you have thunderbolt 2 and then now the brand new one is thunderbolt 3 or usb type c they just try to make it as confusing as possible usb type c is the exact same thing as Thunderbolt 3. Don't get that confused. Thunderbolt 3, literally, if you have a MacBook Pro, the newer one, the newer models, all the inputs on the MacBook Pro are Thunderbolt 3, and that's it. And I'm sure PC, I'm not a PC owner, but I'm pretty sure that's all Thunderbolt 3 too. Like, it's all changing to Thunderbolt 3. You can edit 4K footage off of this. I recommend buying the Thunderbolt 3. So as you can see here, the Thunderbolt 3 version is $304. I think the Thunderbolt, the regular Thunderbolt version, this version is like $260. So just for 50 bucks more, you're gonna get Thunderbolt 3. So you don't need to get an adapter. There are faster read and write speeds because it's Thunderbolt 3. And then what I do, I back this guy up with this. This is a Western Digital uh, three terabyte. This is a three terabyte. So I linked on here for you the four terabyte and then the four terabyte backup solution. This one is USB three. It's slow as hell. You would never want to edit off of this. This is just simply the backup. This is what you edit off of. This is what you use to back up. Uh, if you're a Mac user, I'm pretty sure there's another way to go about it. But what I like to use is carbon copy cloner. This is what it looks like. So let's say we're gonna co copy over PyMe. PyMe has all of the footage, so that's gonna be the source. So we just drag and drop. And then Bali is, we're pretending that it's there's nothing on it. Um, and that'll be our destination. As you can see here, this is our what we're working with right now. If we click this, we'll save changes and there's nothing here. So you can do something totally different when you create a new task, different hard drives. 
stuff like that. You can clone all files or some files. So this is all the footage I have on PyMe right now. I'm gonna just say all files. Uh, safety net is just like a little mini backup that Carbon Copy Cloner does. I just leave that on, it's all recommended. Uh, that's fine. Now you can schedule your, your cloning when you copy something. If you kept this plugged in like all the time and you wanted it to copy something over at 3 p.m. every day, you just leave them plugged in. You go into schedule here and you say, I want to do it on a daily basis. And then you just put the, the start date and put 3 p.m. If you were to keep these plugged in and you don't even need carbon copy cloner to run at all it just it'll do it automatically it's really sweet so you can do a daily basis weekly basis monthly basis um, or when the source or destination is reconnected so if you don't have these plugged in and you have a task task set up right here you just plug them in boom it's gonna it's, it's gonna clone them automatically so i'm gonna leave that as do not run on a, on a schedule and instead at the bottom i'm just gonna clone them manually just click clone and boom starts cloning setup number two if you're a big time traveler or you want just kind of flexibility of of kind of moving around and and just editing anywhere this guy you've seen it before this is the samsung t3 it's a one terabyte they don't make this anymore now they make the t5 it's the same thing only just their updated version that will be linked down below as well it's a little beast and it's definitely a must-have if you are in this game must have i know people that have multiple of these and then i have of course a backup the western digital this is the same thing as this only just one terabyte instead of three terabytes or four terabytes very basic very cheap and this is a usb3 so my most recent trip was bali what i did there was i would film and everything would be on my memory card and i have enough memory cards to not have to delete anything i have two 256 gigabytes and one 128 gigabytes i haven't had a shoot where i would even need to fill all that up after after a day of shooting, I would go this, transfer it to this, and then this transfers to this using Carbon Copy Cloner. So this is Carbon Copy Cloner, and I do this manually. The general rule is to have three locations that you have really important footage. As someone just starting out, going back to this solution here, like this would only be two places, but maybe you would buy one more of these. Um, do you need to do that? I'm going to. Now it's time for setup number three. This is for someone that is really getting into professional video work and needs some serious storage. This is direct attached storage, DAS. Think of this as what this does, what this does, and like what a jump drive does. You literally, it's plug and play. The only difference between those and this is you set it up in a RAID. There are multiple hard drives. This is set up in a RAID 5, which means is if you lose one hard drive, your data is safe. You have four hard drives in here. If you lose one, you're safe. If you set it up at a RAID 6, which is another popular RAID, you have two hard drives to go down and corrupt, you're still safe. So if you have four five terabyte hard drives, so there's a total of 20 terabytes, um, RAID 5, you would have 15 terabytes of storage to play with because it cancels out one hard drive. If you had it set up in a RAID 6, you would only have 10 terabytes of storage to play with because it uses those other two hard drives to save your data in case they some of them go down. That's why I like to use a RAID 5, and RAID 5s are actually a little bit faster in terms of speed than a RAID 6. If you had like a huge setup where you had like eight bays, a bay is where you put your hard drive. If you had eight bays or six bays, you had more of them, I would say, yeah, probably go RAID 6 because it's still, you're gonna get that good amount of read and write speed while you're editing 4K footage. But now that you have more bays to play with, it's not a big deal, you know? Because this is a four bay and my most premium setup is also a four bay, I like to go RAID 5 because I wanna take advantage of as much storage as possible while still having a little bit of redundancy or a little bit of backup and maintain that speed as well. This is the direct attack 
attached storage that screwed me. <laughs> this OD, o, OWC unit. This is actually a backup for me. You can actually edit off this thing and it's it's fast, uh, but because I don't trust it anymore, I just use it as another backup, which I'll show you in a second. In terms of direct attached storage, I recommend this Pegasus. You can get different sizes. This one's a 12 terabyte. You can get a 16, a 24, 32, 36. Keep in mind, as you go up in size, you also go up in the amount of hard drives you can put in there. So if you want a future proof and you want a ton of storage, having a lot of extra bays. But if you're thinking about just being really doing just the basic stuff. Maybe just start with this 12 terabyte here. You get four three terabyte hard drives. You can set it up in RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10. Right now it's pre-configured in RAID 5 and RAID 5 is what I recommend for most people. So you wouldn't even have to do anything. You could literally just plug and play. There's also a really, really good deal going on right now. Uh, as you can see this clip coupon here, and if you go up in size, I believe that clip coupon gets bigger and bigger. I would jump on this right now if you're looking at something like this, but just wait because I'm gonna talk about my next storage solution and it might be for you. If not, I would really check this out. Uh, the link is in the description. To back up a direct attached storage like this RAID 5 here, you're gonna wanna get something as simple like this, and I linked it in the description, only instead of three terabytes or four terabytes, it's 12 terabytes or 24 terabytes, just a big thing. Okay, now for setup number four, this is what I have chosen to do, and I'm gonna explain why right now. Guys, this is a NAS. And a NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. And these connect over the internet. But this one also connects to your computer. So it does both. The only thing it comes with is the enclosure itself. It doesn't actually come with the drives. This enclosure is $1,000. It's basically like a mini computer. And then you buy the hard drives separately. These are the drives that I bought. These are Iron Wolf, Seagate Iron Wolf, six terabyte drives. And uh, I didn't, I decided not to mess around. It does two main things. Let's say I transfer files from this thing to this thing and I need to edit on the go. So I get to the location and shit, I forgot to transfer like a major file that I need. Normally with direct attached storage, you'd be shit out of luck. You'd have to drive back. Or if you were like traveling somewhere and you didn't have it, then you're really screwed. But because this connects to the internet, I can go online to this thing, the software that comes with it. I can grab the clip and download it to this. I don't need to be connected to anything except for Wi-Fi. Also, what it does is it's got Thunderbolt 3. It's got two Thunderbolt 3 ports. So I, I can actually connect this directly to my computer, just like I would with the Samsung, and I can edit off this thing and it's blazing fast. It's so blazing fast that I could edit 8K footage, I believe, with this unit. You get the best of both worlds. You get the network attached storage where you can have access to your files anywhere with a Wi-Fi connection, or I can plug it into my computer and edit with it and not have to edit off of something faster because this is faster, um, it's just a beast. Number three, it actually acts like a mini computer. You can download apps. You can turn this thing into a media player and watch your movies. It replaces Dropbox completely. Instead of having to take finished files and drag and drop into Dropbox, I can just provide a, a link to the client and they can watch it directly through the software that this provides. I'm not even close to using it to its max potential. It also gives me an option to expand. I can connect an expansion drive, like a, like a big giant unit, and transfer files over to that and expand it that way. Um, because it's a RAID 5, I can expand these drives. I can literally replace one at a time. Let's say I had three terabyte hard drives, four of them, and I'm all out of data. That's it, it's all full. 
I can purchase eight terabyte drives and literally take out the three terabyte one, place it with the eight, let it rewrite it on that drive, then replace another one, put the eight terabyte one in, the new one, let it rewrite, do its thing. Do that for each one. Now I have replaced all four hard drives with eight terabyte drives and I have more footage and I didn't even need to buy anything except for just new drives. And like I said, you can also get an expansion unit. I don't know, like a 120 terabyte expansion unit and just keep dumping files onto that and have my main files on this. Because it also has those Thunderbolt 3, two of them ports. If I had another editor, we could literally work on the same project side by side. And yes, it's gonna slow down the speeds, but because this thing's so fast, you can still edit and it'll be totally fine. But now I got two editors, me and some other person, and we're working on a project and we're smashing it, crushing it, and getting it out to a client or YouTube or whatever. I can turn this thing into a backup monster. So right now I have 24 terabytes in here. Let's say this is 24 terabytes. You know how we used Carbon Copy Cloner? This is Carbon Copy Cloner, like by itself and using its software i plug this in to the the front little port here and it will automatically mirror whatever is on here to this automatically and i don't need to do a damn thing that's where this guy comes in what happened with this company is they lost all of my footage and i had an older enclosure and this is a new one they sent me free of charge because of what happened. So now, instead of using this as like direct attached storage, like this technically should be someone's main editing storage because it's fast enough, but because I don't trust them, I'm using this as a backup for this. And now, because this is a NAS device, I can actually send all these files up into the cloud. And that's my third. So I use a program or software called Backblaze. This right here is the main menu of the QNAP, my NAS. And here you can access a bunch of things. We're actually gonna log in. So remember when I said it's like a computer, you have a bunch of apps that you can download. You have an app center. Um, you have your files control panel. This cloud link right here is the way you turn this whole NAS into like a Dropbox setup. Hybrid Backup Sync is the app that we're gonna use to back up the whole thing in like a bunch of different ways. The app is gonna pop up. If we go to all jobs and we go to cloud jobs, right now I have a cloud backup and I have it going to a service called Backblaze. Um, if we go to backblaze.com, Backblaze is a cloud service backup and you can create an account and this is my account right here this is my this is my menu and they have a bunch of different options i'm using b2 cloud storage okay it's the, i believe it's the cheapest option they have and it's basically your last resort backup like if everything fails this is what you would go to to get all of your storage um, it's a last resort you get you get charged per gigabyte of storage something like that if you didn't have a nas device you could still use backblaze and it's still i still recommend it if you just had direct attached setup and you would just do it manually you would literally just drag and drop all your stuff onto here this is literally all of my files and i can upload and i can download but we're not gonna do that. But the nice thing about a NAS is that it connects to Backblaze automatically. So if we go back to hybrid backup sync, we go to overview. Let's say I just created a Backblaze account. I wanna set up my NAS to Backblaze and get that working. So we would click sync. We would go to sync with cloud because we're using a cloud service and we're taking a local file on the NAS and shooting it up to the cloud. So we go local to cloud sync and we would come over here. These are all of the other options that you have. We would click Backblaze B2 and we would put in our display name, account ID and application key that you get from when you create a bucket. Just think of it as 
like a folder that you save all of your stuff to. So if I had another NAS setup or something, I can create a bucket for that NAS. So you can keep everything organized instead of just piling everything into just one folder here. So that's how you would do that. The job that I have right now, if we click edit, this is what it looks like when you're setting up how you want it to transfer over. So homes is where all my Final Cut Pro stuff is and just like all the important stuff. So I click homes and I want it to go to my Hugo Stiglitz backup, which is what I call my NAS device. And if we go to advanced settings, I have it scheduled daily at 3 a.m. And I press apply. Um, if you have like five terabytes and you're just starting to use Backblaze for the first time, this backup to the cloud is going to take a long time. It's very slow and it depends how fast your internet is. So if you have slow internet, it's gonna take even longer. So that's how I back up my NAS to this. And then from the NAS, it also goes up to the cloud. So I have three locations of where all of my data is and I'm not gonna lose anything. That's the video. I hope you guys learned something. I hope this helped. Um, next video, next week, I am officially dropping a brand new vlog series. We're doing it and announcing Project Underground. This is it. I couldn't be more excited. I am scared shitless, but that's why it's all fun. And, and I'm just, yeah, it's just crazy, so. I hope you guys join me. I hope you're excited as much as I am. Let's f effing do this. I will catch you guys in the next one. Uh, work so fucking much, my greatest fear is I'ma die alone. Every diamond in my chain, yeah, that's a milestone. I'm loving it, I'm People loving it. calling me, asking me for money, man. Uh, the only thing I'ma give you motherfuckers is yeah. a doubt.